So welcome everybody and happy Thursday night. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to do uh, lace shaping, something a little bit different. Uh, when I was at the expo, is it a week ago, two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago, almost two weeks ago. I actually got to proctor a class where they were teaching uh, the basics of French heirloom sewing. And I forgot how much I really enjoyed doing that. But, you know, once once the babies got past christening, what else do you do with French heirloom sewing? So I came up with a little project. Uh, and it's a table runner. Uh, and we're going to do a couple of techniques tonight. We're going to do uh, the lace shaping. And we're also going to do how to make your own uh, a hem stitching for the edges of it. So um, here, let me get the project. So whenever you're doing lace shaping, there's a couple things that you need. You need to have a good water soluble marker. And my favorites are now, where did I put it? Actually, I tried it out and I really like it. This one is called Styla. I'm not sure who makes it, but I got it at the expo, and I, I make it's got a ceramic point on it. See, it's got a ceramic point on it, so therefore it doesn't smash. A lot of times, now this is the air erasable. You don't want to use, and it, the ones that, that have this little teeny, like felt tip, those get smashed. Um, I don't like using these on French heirloom sewing because of the fact you're going to be hitting them with an iron. Um, these are air erasable, which usually means by the time you make the mark and by the time you get to working on the, on the project, you have no more mark. Or halfway through it, there's no more lines to see. But the minute you touch it with an iron, and that turns into a nice brown little mark that does not wash away. So Now when you're using these, always test them. Uh, because... These go away with water, but they only go away with clear water. There is a, 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 a an erasable pen that's the same size that you can use, which I swear has nothing but water in it anyway. Um, but this has to be, so if you use this, don't put it in the washing machine with, don't put the item in the washing machine with detergent because detergent is going to, um, is going to set the marks. So you're not going to be able to get rid of them. So you want to use clear, clear, plain water with no fabric softener and no soap in it. And then it'll go away. You can just spritz it with water and it goes away. So that's one thing you want to do. Um, French heirloom sewing is normally done with natural fibers, which is usually organza, cotton organza. Or you can also use linen. So I'm going to use linen because that's what I have is a bunch of linen. So, uh, and you want to use, for lace shaping, you want to use uh, French lace. And it's hard to tell the French lace the right and the wrong side. So, the real right side is which one do you like? Some people like it with it's raised on one side that you can see it, but you also see the netting through it, and I don't care for that. So, I like the one that's a little more flat and you don't see the netting through it. But, whatever you pick be consistent. So if you use the uh, the one with where the knitting shows through, use it all the time. Really, if your face is so close to it that you can see that knitting, because God knows I can't see it, then, um, you know, fine. <laughs> Smack them. If their face is that close, tell them, get away. Step away from the project. So, so we're just going to do a simple heart. Oh, how you can tell uh, French... Uh, insertion lace which is what this is called insertion lace and it has two flat sides and it's let me see if I can let me see it better against my blue shirt <laughs> and so if you see right here on the edges this is called the heading and it has little tiny uh, threads going through it and that's going to be important it's uh, You have to buy the, the regular French lace to do this. You can't buy the cheaper lace or the nylon lace that you get from Joann's or from Home Sew and think you can like stitch in in. It doesn't work very well. I've tried that because, you know, I try cheap, especially for samples. 
and it just didn't work very well because you would have to string it in r really tight and it just doesn't work doesn't look very nice so you have unfortunately this is expensive lace it's not cheap nothing with french heirloom sewing is cheap but that's why those christening gowns cost a thousand or so dollars on that's for the simple ones so yeah I'm sorry it's white on white so I'll hold it up against my my blouse so you can see it and I've done a heart here it's just as a table runner and it's just a plain heart that I'm using here and I've already sewn one side of it um, if you're going to do embroidery on it just draw it out and then do your machine embroidery first I think what I'm going to do with this is put another heart in the middle with more insertion lace or a different one and then I'm going to put a pin tucking or wing needle work behind the heart so and I've cut out you know it from behind so yeah perfect little miters and you think how did you get that so nice so first of all what you want to do this is backwards <laughs> That's the wrong side, but it's hard to tell. For good French heirloom sewing, it's hard to tell the right from the wrong side. Um, and there, how I could tell is that I have not washed it and I could just see the little bits of the hem. Um, like I said, I'm using um, linen and I have starched this linen fairly well. And I just put like three or four layers of, uh, of spray starch and pressed it really nice and crisp. It's, it's been in the bag, so it's not crisp. And actually, I made this table runner. You could do this with getting the things from All About Blanks, but you don't have to. Um, I made my own, and I have put a hem stitch. And that's after we finish the lace shaping, I'm going to show you how to use a wing needle in order to get this really nice hem stitch. This could also be used as entredeau. What entredo literally means in between. A lot of times when you're sewing two pieces of lace or two pieces of fabric together with French heirloom sewing, you're going to sew that onto entredo and then which you can also purchase. But remember this stuff only comes in one color, so you can make your own with your decorative stitches on your machine. And I'll show you how to do that later. And with a wing needle. Okay, so I have how I made the pattern. I just took some freezer paper and I drew half of a heart. Then I put it on the light box and traced the other side and made sure that I liked how it looked. Okay. Then I cut it out. I cut one out to use as a template. And then what I did was I put it on the table or I put it on this side and I simply drew the outline. Now this is the outer edge. So let me set this up so that we can start the lace shaping. I'm going to put my heart here and it's kind of hard to see. Adjust my marker so you can, I'll just make this darker. I'm just going to Draw this in really dark and hopefully you can see this. I'm just going to draw half that heart and I'm going to start on one side whichever side you want to do does not matter so you want to use glass headed pins or pins that do not have any any marking at all so I'm going to start on the outside edge and I want to make sure that straight up from this edge I have lace okay and I'm going what I'm using here is a pad padded uh, board you can use any padded board or you can um, use this one what I'm using here is my felt board and that works really well because I can really put these pins in nice and, and I'm putting them in at a slant when I've got a fairly large area where it's nice and smooth I really don't have to put too many pins 
and I'm doing this left-handed. <laughs> I know it's recording because it says it's recording so we may have to watch this later because I'm something's not right they're doing now as this curve begins to deepen I'm going to have to put in more and more pins what you don't want to see is a flat so you want this relatively but usually when it gets really deep at the top, I'll probably put those pins like every quarter to a half an inch apart. And I'm just following the line. Let me go in really close here. Take a bunch of pins out and see what I'm doing is I'm just following the line. Now it's getting kind of deep, so I'm going to put those pins really close together. And yes, it's sticking up here. I don't care. We're all good. And this can be time consuming. Hopefully it won't take forever to do this. I know, I could put this on a wrist pin cushion. But what fun would that be? Okay, now I'm coming to the point. So I'm going to put in a, a pin right here. I'm going to put a pin straight down. straight down, imaginary line straight down. I'm going to fold this back. Don't worry about that. Okay. Do not worry about this line right here. It's going to cross. We will eventually sew that off. And you can replace the pin. bottom but see I've pulled it I'm pulling it tight against here see right here I'm pulling that tight and I'm just matching up the other line because this is not necessarily a 45 degree angle like in most miters depends on how you drew your heart it takes a lot of pins and this is why I like these really thin silk pins these are like those IDC pins that I bought years ago they work great on silk and Almost out of the curve. I know I should have done diamond. Diamonds are quicker. But I like hearts. This looks really nice at Valentine's Day on top of a red tablecloth. Okay, now this, the curve is a lot more shallow, so it's 
What I do is I hold it straight until I can't follow the line anymore. And then I put it in the pan. Here's the, I'm not going to worry about the crisscross, if it properly, so I'm, because my lace isn't quite long enough, there's one thing I have to do. And ordinarily what you do is you put a pin at the bottom and you, you turn this 45 degrees and you tuck it. But that is not necessary with this design because we're doing French heirloom sewing, which means we're going to come back later and miter that corner. Okay, now look at that. That looks all yucky like this because this is all flippy. So what I'm going to do, and I need those other glasses because I can't see this. There it is. I need these glasses this is really close work so what I want to do is I want to grab the threads and there's sometimes they're hard to get so I want to get a thread from the end okay and now that I've grabbed them watch this now there's two threads and I'm just going to start to pull them and look what happens here and as I pull these threads see how that straightens out nice that side and I'm going to do this and I'll lift this up because I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the heart so grab the grab it with a pin there we go and watch it as I pull the threads look at that go really nice okay Okay, now I'm going to crisscross those back, put them back in, in where they're supposed to be. Straighten that out. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to spray starch this, because now how do we get this to the machine? So we're going to spray starch it. Not a lot. And... This is why you have to use the glass or the metal pins, because you don't want to melt pins. So, I've got to heat up my, well, heat this up. I'm just going to press this down and make sure it's nice and crisp. Or just do it directly on, we'll see. No, I don't want to do it directly. Oh, one thing I wanted to tell you about the French lace is that the French lace, you should pre-shrink your lace. Always pre-shrink your lace because it does shrink. And all you have to really do is just spray starch it and press it. And that heat of the iron will pre-shrink that lace for you. Good to go. I'm just going to check it and make sure I pressed it dry. I don't care if I leave imprints. So this is why you cannot use that air erasable pen because this would set it. Heat does not bother the blue pen, the blue wash aways. Okay. Now that's pressed nice and flat. The next thing I do is I'm going to release this, so I'm going to take a couple pins out at a time. And just as I lift the pins, I'm going to pin it in. And just lift this as I go. B 
being that it's starch and that the lace is cotton, which means that starch is going to act like a glue, And then after, I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. And I'm going to set your machine up for a straight and normal, nothing special zigzag. Now the thread that I'm going to be using on my machine is a lingerie bobbin thread, which is great because you can use your threads. Um, well, it's the side, it's the same weight. Actually what I'm using is uh, Madeira's Katona thread, which is a 70 weight thread. It's ultra fine, but it is pure cotton. And it does sew very nicely. And I have it in both the needle and the bobbin. See, it's kind of sticking. Almost acts like a glue. If it's not behaving, then you might want to take some glue basting. Uh, the, you know, the, the glue, the little tiny glue, which is um, which is this Acorn Precision Piecing, or Aileen's makes one as well. And you would just put little dots along where you're going to sew. I'm not going to bother. because I think it will do fine. We're almost there. Okay. And then the stitch I'm going to select is going to be a, just an ordinary zigzag. Okay, let's go to the machine. Because I'm using such tiny thread, very, very, very ultra fine thread, I am using, you can't use the needle threader. It did not work. No matter what I did, it would not go. So I've set up my machine on stitch number 1-04, which is a center needle position. And I am so, which is, oh, I want to, no, it's not 104. I want to use a regular zigzag, which is 1.09. And I want to use a 2 two point or one point five millimeter width and a two point zero stitch length very tiny i am going to just simply because it is heavily starched you do not have to worry about starching it or putting a stabilizer underneath of it okay i'm going to start on the straightaway i'm using an open toe foot and i'm going to use I, I, well, I don't have my stiletto with me, but these are wonderful, and this one is a little on the long side, but this will help hold it. I'm using an open toe foot. I'm going to start with the needle in the position, and I'm going to start to stitch. I'm going to try to stitch. <laughs> okay, and I want... Actually, one point, I'm going to do a 1.5 length too because that is, and I'm going to remove, and I'm just stitching right over top of the, the header. And yes, you didn't see me run over those pins. That is not a good thing to do. <laughs> Usually you take your time. If you have to pivot, then do so. It means lifting. If you're going to pivot a lot, turn on the pivoting feature on your machine, which looks like a like the presser foot with a needle going through it. Okay. And Raise it. Very good. 
and now I'm going on the other side. Okay, I'm just going to stop there. And pull out these pins. I started at the end. I'm just going to start here because I want to show you how to do there. Okay, again I am going to just stitch on the other side and yes there's we're going to cut out that lace and yes that's this is living even more dangerously but and stitch this one I'll pull out This way and get okay. I'm going to break thread there, and I'm going to take it just a little bit here. Actually, that's where I should have started. Oops. Where I would have come around, I would have stopped right there. I'm just going to break. Now let me get the inside of this point. Now, could you use a wider zigzag? Sure you could. However, you're going to see it. The idea with... Uh, French heirloom sewing is to emulate hand stitching because this all was originally done in the Wild West. Needle down. Or in the Wild West France, I guess. <laughs> okay, and get a pin out of there. And this was all done by hand at one time. Hand is a four-letter word. Okay, I'll just break thread there. Well, I'll go up to where I left, take the pins out so I'll know where to finish tonight. Okay. Uh, for cutting out the insert to reveal just the lace, you want to use a pair of scissors that have a blunt nose, or you could use applique scissors. You don't want to use a pointed scissor because the scissor is going to uh, cut your lace and then you end up in, with a mess. I'm going to go to the back and I'm just going to do the two points. So I'm going to pull this away, making sure I have a pinch to cut. Then I'm going to, what I like about these is they're blunt and they will not catch the lace. You want to make sure you have good, sharp scissors. I'm just going to cut away part of it here. So I can show you how, what you do to finish up. Cut up one side. And cut the other. If you accidentally cut your lace, it is not the end of the world, but you will learn how to do hand stitching in order to fix it. Because <laughs> that's the only way you can fix it. There. And see, now this is open, so we're not done yet. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. 
come over here and pull it away and feel both sides and I've got that lace really good and just make a little cut just enough to get the scissor in there and start working up one side and reveal your lace. And yes, I will come back later and do this a lot neater with the magnifying lens with the light on so that it will get it really close because that's not <laughs> Very close at all. And okay. And now what what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, I'm going to sew straight down. So now we'll go over to the machine using the same stitch length. We are going to so straight down from one end to the other. You can do your lock stitching here. Or just back tack it and go straight down. And then you're going to trim that excess away. Again with the sharp, and I'm not going to even try to do that with just the glasses that I have on now. <laughs> not without the light and going really, really close. And back tack it, cut. And now you can, let's see, I need something dark, something dark over here. Well, here. And now you can see the lace from underneath. See? And you will just trim these pieces away. And then you will see a, you'll see a line going down, but that's all you will see. Just heavily starch your piece of fabric. And I have one starched already. You also want to use a water-soluble stabilizer, and we want to switch to a wing needle. A wing needle is, is just a regular sharp needle that has got a flange on the other, either side of it that is going to push aside the threads. And I'm using, this one is a size, see how it's got that flange? It's like a dart, okay? You also cannot use the needle threader when you are using a wing needle. You will break the needle threader. Ask me how I know. Okay, so I'm going to, so what you do is you leave your thread in the old needle if you have automatic, if your machine has automatic uh, threading. Take it out. In other words, thread that one. And then replace this replace it with the wing needle and um, if you have a baby lock or a brother high-end embroidery machine with a front loading bobbin you don't want to do anything bigger than a size 16 needle otherwise you're going to damage your bobbin case and this is one where you have to thread your own, own needle now this eye is a little bigger and hopefully it'll cooperate Yeah, miracle of miracles. I'll put that up under and thread guide. Okay. Okay, here's the machine here. We're going to pick the menu, and most machines will have heirloom type stitches, and I'm going to use the heirloom menu. No. I want 2-14. It looks like a ladder, okay, and it's a hem stitch. 
and it's telling you to use the J foot, but we're not going to. We are going to use the N foot. Why I use the, or either the end foot or use the open toe foot. And the reason that you're going to do that is if you look at the foot, a, a regular general purpose foot is flat. This has got a lot of thread buildup, and therefore it's going to jam. So I disagree with the machine because the machine, this machine tells you what foot to use. But this time I want to use the open toe because <clears throat> not only can you see it, but it has a channel that the thread can ride under it without getting jammed. Okay, so I always always do a test because every machine's going to look a little different. So I did a test earlier and this one, yes, I'm using stitch number 3-20. I am doing it 3.5 width and I want my length to also be 3.5. And so here's the stitch. Here's what it looks like on the screen. I'm using a, uh, some water soluble stabilizer underneath of it. Otherwise, the fabric is going to want to tunnel in, which means it's gonna smoosh up like that. I probably, what I did on the main piece is instead I used embroidery thread, which is a 40 weight, which is much thicker and it has a sheen to it because I just wanted it to look fancier. But otherwise, this will work fine, okay? So, and now, all I do is stitch. I'm going to stitch through everything. And you see it's going to leave holes. You don't want to go really fast, because otherwise it's going to want to tunnel on you if you go too fast. So it'll go nice and even speed. And I'll do about another half an inch. Also, when you have a wing needle, it is also not a good idea to use the automatic scissor that's in the machine. Um, because this blade is so wide on the end, you could end up damaging your machine. And these are not cheap to fix. If I recall, it was like 150 bucks to have these things serviced. Like, ugh. <laughs> So take good care of them. See? And see how it leaves the holes? And if you've got the prettier, shinier thread like I have here, I'm using embroidery, embroidery thread. And see, it just has a little more sheen to it. And of course, you're going to start your fabric. You're going to really, really tight. Um, I recommend using at least three to six coats of heavy spray starch or use Terriel Magic which is um, available at almost all quilt shops and sewing stores uh, and it's ultra it's like super it's like spray starch on steroids it'll stand up like paper if you have any questions what you'll have to do is to email me email me at waltzquilt at yahoo.com anyway talk to you later and I'll see you next Thursday, and you have a great weekend, and keep sewing. Bye.